The Bible says, when you die, you will face God Almighty at the great white throne judgment. It says all the books will be opened and everything will be revealed. The Bible says you will be speechless, you will have no defense. At that time you will be sentenced and cast into hell. There you will be punished for every bad deed and bad thought you ever did on earth. But listen, I've got good news for you. It doesn't have to end that way because Jesus Christ is offering you a full pardon from your sins. The Bible says, if you believe on Jesus, you are not condemned. But if you do not believe on Jesus, you are condemned already. So the fact is, if you do not believe on Jesus, you are already condemned and you are waiting on death row. You're waiting for death, waiting for hell. What if you were on death row in the state of Nevada? What if the governor of Nevada offered you a full pardon? Would you turn it down? Of course not. Only a fool would turn down a pardon from the governor. In that same way, Jesus Christ is offering you a full pardon from your sins. It would be foolish to turn it down. Many people think that since God is love, God will just forgive everyone. This idea is called universal salvation. If that is what you think, then you really don't understand God at all. It is true that God is love, but God has more qualities to his nature than simply love. God is also holy, righteous, and just. God wants to forgive you, but God also demands justice. Let me use a, a mock trial to illustrate the absurdity of universal salvation. Imagine that you just got arrested by the police. You were hauled into court and the judge says, I've looked at all the evidence and I've heard all the witnesses. I am finding you guilty of many crimes. Now you must pay the fine, which is a very large sum of money. Then you say to the judge, I've heard that you are a loving judge, so just forgive me and let me go. Do you really think that the judge would just let you go? No, the judge would say, I find you in contempt of court. You have insulted the integrity of the judicial system. Crimes were committed, and in order for justice to be done, the fine must be paid. So either pay the fine, or you will be sent to prison. Now suppose that a stranger stood up in the courtroom and said, Here's a check for the entire fine. All you have to do is accept it. In that same way, Jesus is offering to pay your fine. So you have a choice. Either accept the gift Jesus is offering you, or you must pay the fine yourself in hell. Listen. I am simply asking you to trust Jesus. I'm telling you that you need Jesus. So the next logical question is, who is this Jesus? That is the most important question you will ever have to answer. This question is so important that Jesus once asked his apostles, who do you say that I am? So I want to ask you, who do you say Jesus is? Where you will be a thousand years from now depends upon how you answer that question. Jesus warned that in the end times, many false Christs will be preached. That certainly is true today. 
Many false religions today claim that they believe in Jesus. But I am urging you to test them by the Bible. Let's try that now. If you ask a Muslim, do you believe in Jesus? They will say, yes, of course we believe in Jesus. We, we believe Jesus was a great prophet, but not the Son of God, not the way to heaven. If you ask a Buddhist, they will say, yes, we believe Jesus really existed and he was one of many highly evolved and enlightened masters. If you ask a Mormon, they will say, of course we believe in Jesus. We even put the name Jesus Christ in the name of our church. <laughs> but the name of their church betrays them. It is called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It is not the Church of Jesus Christ of the Bible. So, what's the difference? Mormons believe Jesus is the brother of Lucifer the devil. Mormons believe Jesus is just one of millions of gods. Mormons even believe that they will eventually become a god of their own planet. Pardon me, that I need to correct that last statement. Uh, they believe that the male Mormons can become gods, but not the female Mormons. They're just out of luck. But what does the Bible say about all this? The Bible says there is only one God. The Bible says there never has been another God. <laughs> the Bible says there never will be another God. Yet Mormons believe in millions of gods. Now, if you ask these so-called Jehovah Witnesses if they believe in Jesus, they say, yes, they they believe in Jesus, but they believe Jesus is a created being, Michael, the archangel. They say he is not God Almighty, and he is not the way to heaven. But if you really want to know the truth about Jesus, you must go to the Bible for the answer. The Bible says, Jesus is Jehovah, God Almighty. The Bible says, a virgin will conceive a child. She will have a son. He will be Emmanuel. That translates to God with us. That's right. The Bible says God became a man named Jesus and he lived among us.